update it's wednesday september 29th 2021 yes the month of september slowly drawing to a close and we're back to uh, well update you on the latest events and happenings out here in uh, the trader's paradise it's your boy coming to you live once again joined by uh yeah two of cc's finest finest analysts we got alex and jason with us today alex how are you this afternoon i'm well thank you all right, we still got to get And that mic's coming in shitty today, yeah. huh? He's got a crappy mic. We will get him a better mic very, very soon, guys. Bear with us. But in the meantime, Jason, how about you? How you doing? Oh, it's just a beautiful hump day. It certainly is. Can't believe it's Wednesday already. Can't believe uh, it's nearly October as well. Time. Got one more day left on the monthly. Things are not looking too bullish, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, they look pretty ugly, actually. What, what, uh, what a droopy, droopy way to end the month. But uh, we're gonna get into all that and more. Bitcoin, of course, betterly hanging on to uh, 40k. It's currently at 41.4, and uh, traditional markets saw a bit of a bounce today, as well as uh, Dixie, well, Dixie soaring. Um, so did the traditional markets see a bounce today? Uh, maybe it's maybe it's some corners um you know it was a route over the you know the first part of the week so i think today is like a little bit of a relief maybe not so much a rally but i think some of the the bleeding has been stemmed so 
Um, let's let's go ahead, guys. That's and get just it. what they want you to think. That's exactly. Well, if you're watching our our show, um, you're indeed prepared for a lot worse to likely come. But uh, we're gonna get into all that in just a few minutes, guys. We do have, of course, a chalk. Well, uh, 60 plus minutes ahead of us where we're going to cover everything from the news to uh, look at the alts to a uh, uh, shout out to the audience before we get into the main TA segment. We're going to open up that D-Live chest and even get to your requests in the latter half of the show. So hang on for that. Um, Sounds like we're getting a bunch of echo from yeah, Alex. Alex, you're echoing like crazy. Can you turn down your speaker volume or maybe mute your mic while I'm speaking? Maybe if your voice just wasn't so resonant, Jack, huh? Did you think of that? Uh, no, God gifted him with that. We do, we do what we must. All right, <laughs> thank you, sir. I think we're God given reverb. All right. So I'm turning off automatic input sensitivity. Yes. Let's. Oh. Uh, All right, you're gonna go to push the box. You sound a world's better right now. This is better. Way better. Uh, okay, so we'll we'll leave this here for now. And cool. Yeah, well, Jack, you start talking again. See if we get we'll that roll with it. But uh, sounds good so far. Let's keep it going, guys. Got a little bit of news to cover today, so I'm gonna get right into it. This first piece, uh, a little follow up from a uh, news story from yesterday. You guys remember we talked about the uh, the mistaken oversized Ethereum gas fee. Yes, some bit for next employee accidentally uh, attached what twenty three million dollars in gas to a to a hundred thousand dollar send. Uh, well, there is a happy ending to this. Something we speculated on yesterday, gave and that is back. they gave it back. With all the exploits and hacks in the industry, it's shocking that some players have remained sincere. Many exchanges have already lost considerable sums to criminals, and while some get refunded, others don't. But for example, in the case of this Bitfinex error, user lost nearly 7,600 Ethereum in a wrong payment transaction. But in this case, the decentralized exchange mistakenly sent $23 million payment in gas to a miner who was supposed to be $100,000 alone in Tether. Uh, let's see, when the Diversify team discovered what happened, they quickly assured users that their funds were safe. According to them, it was an erroneous transaction and nothing else. Luckily, the company owned up to the mistake and agreed to bear the brunt of the loss if nothing else could be done to recover the money. However, the miner is one of the sincere ones. Therefore, uh, in this block height number here, owner agreed to return 7,626 Ethereum, which the hardware address sent as payment okay interesting uh so i guess uh all is well that ends well and this user I bet writes that uh i bet that employee's like Phew! or if he's not fired um in this case i think we've learned more as to who it was it was actually the diversify guy so i guess they have a uh they have a bitfinex account uh so it's likely actually uh them or some function some function of their operations or at diversify uh, and here's a tweet from them writing, uh, the blockchain is immutable, but the revolution is where one where we are part of is defined by our values as humans. Thank you for the miner of this block who we can confirm has returned 7,600 ether that were incorrectly paid as a transaction fee. All right. So indeed, there's some honor. In fact, pretty, pretty decent standard of honor, uh, among some of the, uh, some of the infrastructure participants. So shout outs to the miner who in fact returned millions of dollars this is how it's done guys this is what makes us a respectable bunch is stories like this and less of the uh well the ugly ones right um, today's sliver of hope mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is better than I, am. I totally would uh totally would have shoved that stuff right in the tornado cash there you go um <laughs> Indeed, don't worry, I would have spread it around with you guys too, though. Trust me. Um, let's go ahead and get to this next piece from B and Crypto. Uh, Dapper Labs launching an NFL version of NBA's Top Shot NFTs. Indeed, I think Alex even mentioned this in the uh, premium. Here is the tweet. Indeed, according to sources, this week the NFL and the NFL Players Association and Dapper Labs will announce a deal to launch a digital collectible marketplace resembling the NFT. Uh, the NFT hit NBA Top Shots. Yeah, another day, another major sports type. I mean, is there anything bigger in the world of, uh, you know, consumer goods, consumer collectibles, um, merch, um, you know, other than uh, sports merch? I think sports merch is absolutely massive. And, you know, what we are really seeing here is, uh, is blockchain really muscling in 
uh, and um, kind of taking over, or at least carving out a new industry in the way, uh, one of the most revolutionary, I think, uh, use cases for crypto, for blockchain, is NFTs. And here they are, this time with the NFL and the NFL Players Association, big deal with Dapper Labs planning to launch their uh, NFT platform in the near, near future. So uh, very, very cool. One way to get to the normies, of course, and win over the heart of many normies is, uh, yeah, um, engaging them on uh, on the terms of sports ball. Yes, NFL, NBA, you name it. The people, the yeah, you know, this, this speaks to the common man. And this is one way to uh, get them acquainted with uh, this revolutionary new tech. So uh, another big sports tie-up, Dapper Labs. Oh, absolutely on fire uh let's keep it going here uh this one comes from the black crypto also concerning nfts man we're talking a lot about nfts on the show lately but here's this piece from the black crypto titled christie's nft business is booming despite the market lull uh all right so this is of course actually part of a podcast here uh this week the world's largest auction house cracked over a hundred million dollars in nft sales that is insane you know, it'd be one thing if that'd be an impressive number just for an NFT marketplace, period. But like a traditional brick and mortar kind of auction house to have moved 100 million in just digital goods. What a world we live in. Uh, Christie's Noah Davis says they're just getting started. Uh, let's see, an associate vice president, head of digital sales over at the auction house, uh, joined on this interview to discuss the rise of NFT sales in 2021 and how traditional art market and this brave new world are converging and bolstering adoption of a possible blockchain future. It's incredible, uh, this uh, CEO says. It's incredible that it continues to gather speed and interest continues to pour in from new corners of the world. Uh, of course, this gentleman here is a specialist in post-war contemporary art. He highlighted a recent uptick in the interest in NFT sales with buyers in Asia, noting that like traditional art market that I talked about, they're starting to line up uh, on the sidelines, if not dive in. All right, yeah, just another thing for the wealthy to, uh, to FOMO in on. A uh, new generation of art. What a wave! So much, uh, so much, so much uh, discretionary income out there among the uber wealthy. Hundred million in sales at Christie's and digital art alone. Pretty impressive stuff. Even given you know, kind of the market being in the tank, uh, hasn't really slowed down the uh, the price action, the volumes over at Christie. Go yeah. figure. One of the things that I was thinking about, I'm like, would it really like if the crypto market and everything else tanks, like? Does it necessarily mean the NFT market has to go? It's just kind of its own beat. It's its own type of market, right? Like it's like there's no stop losses or anything like that. So it's just weird to think about like, but it yeah. could just keep going. Yeah, I mean, I look at it as increasingly more and more of a luxury good, right? So maybe yeah. even when the times are tough, do uh, do the uber wealthy pull back on, uh, you know, ordering expensive yeah, cars? Cust yeah, you know, art, any any of their you know conspicuous consumption items, expensive cars, art, jewelry, you know, clothes, whatever. Um, do the rich pull back on their uh, you know con conspicuous consumption at times of uh, financial struggle on the markets? That's a good question, and maybe NFTs will fall more into that than they will into normal finance, but. I imagine, I suspect, they're actually pretty well correlated. But let's go ahead and get into uh, another piece here. This one from Crypto Slate titled The Kasama uh, Parachain Moon River Exceeds Expectations was with uh, over 1.75 million transactions. Hey, I noticed we talk a lot about Moon River on the show as of late. comes up as a request. We talked about it yesterday, I think, as well on the show. Well, uh, just a little article here, very briefly. Moon River Smart Contract Platform is an Ethereum-compatible smart contract platform, and it's still one of the most successful projects to launch in Kusama today, according to the latest data. Moon River Network is inching closer to 2 million transactions, an incredible feat for a network that launched just a few weeks ago. All right, well, uh, if you haven't heard of Moon River yet, guys, ha uh, you know, uh, ticker symbol Mover, M-O-V-R. We've covered on the show a few times. I uh, haven't really... Taken much of a dive, but uh, yes, we did in fact look at it yesterday. But uh, I do encourage you guys to check it out. This article, the link will be in the description below. Does talk about Mover, what they do, um, and I figured just mention that one of the most successful protocols, if not the most successful protocol, on the Kusama network to date. You can just talk to Bricks. <laughs> Yes, talk to Bricks or whoever. Again, somebody, just people in the chat who request Mover on a regular basis. Uh, with that said, let's get into this next piece. You know, today titled Tether scores a major legal win in a trillion dollar market manipulation case. Yes, you remember uh, this this little legal proceeding is still ongoing. Well, 
Tether apparently scoring a bit of a win. Stablecoin issuer Tether and affiliated crypto exchange Bitfinex have notched a legal win in a major market manipulation case that has been dragging on for over two years. U.S. District Judge Catherine Polk uh, has dismissed half the claims made against the defendants. Tether and Bitfinex have indicated that they are not willing to settle with the remaining claims, describing them as meritless. We're grateful to the judge for their meticulous opinion, which exposed many deficiencies in the plaintiff's claims. And a group of plaintiffs slapped the two controversial companies with a class, a class action lawsuit seeking over a trillion dollars in damages. They were accused of toying with the crypto market. Two other crypto exchanges, Poloniex and Bitrix, were also added uh, an amended version of the suit. Bitfinex and Tether quickly moved to dismiss this frivolous lawsuit during the same month it was filed. All right, so uh, yeah, I remember this. I remember this big class action lawsuit. This was in the wake. This is when the dust settled in the wake of the uh, post-2017 uh, binge and the uh, subsequent 18 bust. Uh, a lot of people were wrecked. A lot of people were talking about the Tether, the Tether FUD, and how Tether manipulated it, and Tether popped the bubble. Uh, it resulted in a class action lawsuit, which as of today, a big portion of it apparently has been dismissed. Uh, at least one big claim here has been... Uh, yeah, dismissed half the claims made against the defendants concerning, uh, yes, market manipulation. So, a uh, bit of a win for Tether. And here we are a few years later. And how much is the Tether's total market cap, etc., etc.? Still going strong. The FUD has never seemed to actually catch up with us. Uh, not yet, at least. Here's another piece from USBTC. BTC. Ah, yes, miner refunds the 7600. We already covered this. Good. Um, another story or two, we're going to get into the next segment. By the way, it's Wednesday. You know what that means, right? Mentorship session. We're going to have to kind of wrap the show up a little early, so I better hurry this new segment along. One story or two left. Uh, banking Bitcoin. The title of this article from Forbes. Swiss regulator approves first crypto investment fund. It's the first digital asset custodian. Switzerland's financial regulator has issued two approvals for a domestic crypto investment fund and a domestic digital asset custody service. Just days after China's central bank claimed Bitcoin and other financial blockchains are a threat to economic stability, the Swiss financial market supervisory authority, FINMA, formally approved the crypto market index fund, the first investment fund of its kind within Switzerland after careful consideration of its potential to facilitate serious innovation in a consistently technologically neutral way. In a related development, the Cefa Bank, a Swiss bank specializing in digital assets, said the regulator had also granted it new license to act as an institutional grade custodian bank for Swiss collective investment schemes. All right, so a uh, decent day in Switzerland on the regulatory front. Two major approvals for, well, a nation famous, of course, for uh, banking, innovation in the field. Um, one, one's a digital fund uh, getting the, the green light today. And, of course, the other is uh, this institutional grade custodial bank, Seb Seba, or Seba. We've covered them on the past because we have covered uh, the, Swiss, uh, the Swiss crypto landscape before here on the channel. I do recognize this bank indeed as getting uh, one, one of the premier Swiss banks involved in crypto. Well, now they got custody license as well. Things are progressing. Um, one last item here from Crypto Briefing. Elon, yes, we haven't, haven't really mentioned Elon on the show in a while. Wow. Maybe I should probably keep that streak going, but alas, it's going to be broken. And uh, that's with the article titled do nothing says elon musk urging u.s crypto regulators the tesla and spacex ceo has advocated for a hands-off approach for regulating crypto markets i bet he'd like that uh tech entrepreneur elon musk has weighed in on crypto regulation in the u.s advising the government to quote do nothing to avoid slowing the industry's advancement elon musk has urged the u.s government to overregulate the space speaking at the code conference in beverly hills tuesday musk commented on the value of crypto in the future government regulation in an interview with the new york times musk said that while he believes it's not possible to destroy cryptos authorities could slow down its advancement by imposing harsh regulations on the industry when asked specifically what the u.s government should do regarding crypto regulation musk simply replied do nothing 
the uh, the CEO, of course, at SpaceX, massive crypto expert. Oh yes, he's not a crap massive crypto expert. Oh, he, sees, what? he sees a lot of value in crypto uh, over fiat money, and hopefully reduce the error and latency in legacy money systems and blah 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 blah. All right, so Elon, of course, you guys want to check out a little more of the story. I will leave the link in the description below. But Elon encourages regulators to do nothing. No more. Fat chance of that happening, but. Uh, Yes, there is Elon chiming in as if uh, if it wasn't clear enough that indeed there is a lot of buzz right now in the room concerning regulations. I just feel like it's uh, it's imminent. We just might wake up one day with uh, big reforms uh, suddenly on the table by the current admin. Seems like that day is drawing ever closer. All right, that's pretty much it for news. Not much more to add. Lightning Network capacity reaches all-time high. Indeed, time to onboard a few bucks to Lightning Network. Um, beyond that, we got to get into the next segment. What's going on in the bubbles? What's going on in the alt space? Huh. It's getting greener every time I look back to bubbles. Uh, DYDX, one of the top gainers of the day. It's up over 20% after having, I think, another solid day yesterday. DYDX. Uh, Omizigo, OMG, up nearly 16%. Axie up 15%. Hey, even BNB is having a decent day today. BNB is up a little over 11%. Currently at 368 bucks. I think those, I think those gains are short-lived. Uh, I That's bet just me personally. I bet you do. Uh, yeah, we got a bunch of single-digit gainers today. The likes of Cake, ICP, Zill, Solana, Stellar, Neo, quite a few more. It's not too bad. A day of single-digit gains across the board. A few losers though. Also, about uh, five percent down by the likes of uh, XDC, BCH, A, Sushi, and a few more. All right, there was a very brief look at the bubbles. Nothing too remarkable going on today. Mostly uh, lightly in the green today. What do we got uh, in the audience engagement section of the show? Who's kicking it with us this Wednesday afternoon? Scrolling up to find Daniel. Big shout outs to Daniel first in the chat. Bear with me one second. I just got to expand this out. All right, that's better. And back to Daniel. Shout out to Daniel. Uh, Ron Legato on YouTube as well. Big shout outs to you, Mr. Ether. Damn, I I tried for the first time. Oh, um, Mr. Ether, you got beat by the regulars. They are somehow always. I don't know how the likes of Daniel are always in here so quick. You guys are just watching for me to schedule the show around 12:30 every day. Alex, 12:33. Um, shout outs to you on D Live. Uh, Rhino TD. Good evening, peeps. A very good evening to Rhino TD. Uh, early bird YouTubers, indeed. That's what they are. Um, Dixie up hard today, says Jason. Indeed, we're going to take a look at the Dixie in just a minute. Surprise, things are holding up as well as they are, given what the Dixie's doing. I totally feel you with that sentiment. Uh, let's see here. Rhino TD shouts out Jason, the man with the best chart catchphrases. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. I didn't know you guys had the best chart catchphrases. Are those like hanging man? I didn't man? even know I had chart catchphrases. I That's guess we do. Hanging Man, Jericho's, you name it. No, 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 let's get to the dollar. Oh, get to the dollar. That catchphrase. Oh, get to the dollar. What are you doing? Oh, yeah, we do have some stupid shit. Indeed, we <laughs> like do. Like Whistling Dixie. Rhino TD, I beg to differ. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Rhino TD, Crypto Jenny. Crypto Jenny's with us. Howdy. Big howdy cowboy hat to Crypto Jenny. Uh, Mike Maker's with us as well. Big shouts to Mike Maker. Um... Rhino TD asks, are we going to dump just one more time down to 39? Yeah, we'll dump to 39 and we might go even deeper this time. Uh, Mr. Ether, I'm out of cash and back in Bitcoin unless we lose 40k. Ooh, we've had a bit of a flip-flop. Yes, he certainly did. I guess I, I feel him. Hey, I feel him. We're just hanging on to 41-ish. Just too brutally strong maybe we indeed have to we've done it all we've sold everything we could we can't even get back to 39 and we're going up that's the mr ether it's an important time in the market if people are starting to make those decisions flip flopping like a fish on the floor um zomb zombieologist over on twitch shout outs to you uh pdd 63 i don't buy until the market goes below 36.5 bitcoin i'm hodling way too much all right, uh, Poly yeah. B. Yes, don't buy anymore until it hits 36. Then you start backing up. I feel like the bull market teaches people bad habits. Uh, yeah, for sure. Indeed. Diamond hands can be a detriment at some point. Poly B, shout outs to you uh, on D Live. 
Uh, what's a good guys? Oh, you mean what's good guys? What's good indeed? Ryan OTD already mentioned. David Rice is with us on DLive as well. Mike Maker, I think I already mentioned as well. Uh, if ETH goes down, that just means cheaper NFTs. It sure does. Uh, let's see here. It's like jewelry. If you're talking about NFTs, indeed, it is a lot like digital new age jewelry. Uh, Rhino TD, maybe cheaper fees, not cheaper NFTs. Maybe not. NFTs are still pumping. Profit bears. So are we expecting Bitcoin to go to 35 or are we expecting it to hold 40? The double bottoms got me thinking 40 is super weak. Oh, uh, yeah. Like I said in the chat, you know what I think. Like, I think it looks super weak. Yep. yep. You know, pack it, you know, wrap it, package it, ship it. It's going straight to hell. Um, Profit Bear, I came here for your thoughts. Indeed, he came here for Jason's thoughts. You are my guy. Yes, some people, indeed, I think, uh, take a lot of insight oh, away make me blush. from our analysts. Uh, I'd be super shocked if 40s end up being a bottom, says Jason. Indeed, uh, I'm reading all of Jason's comments today. Uh, a lemon for your thoughts, sir. Why, thank you so much, Crypto Jenny. Jonah, love the show, is with us today. We love green bubbles. I'm certain most of us alt bag holders do like seeing green bubbles on there. Uh, Electric, hey, hey, everyone. Big shout outs to Electric. It's riveting to be here. Okay, Drag077, wondering what the theoretical reason for the rise and fall of Algorand is. Um, people bought it and then people sold it. Yes, that's... Yeah. Best way to describe it. Theoretical. That's the real reason. Yeah, that's the that's the real. It's it's no longer a hypothesis. <laughs> yes. Price moves in and out like the tide. I'm currently stuck holding a position that in order to get back to break even, it would have to flip Bitcoin's market cap. <laughs> oh my god. That's Bad day. Funny. One of those days, huh? Uh, so you're saying there's a chance, says B Flow. How long have you been holding that bag? All right, well, uh, best of luck with everyone and their trading adventures today. But we're going to have to hop into the next segment. And that, of course, is the main TA. Can't wait to look at the Dixie. That thing is just looking insane. But are we running into resistance? I look forward to hearing uh, our analysts' thoughts in just a moment. Let's have a look here. Alex has just went live. I'm connecting to him now. Let's get into the main scene. Here we go. All right. Um, let's see here. Alex's screen kind of uh, blurry still. Let's try reconnecting. All right. Um, connected to Alex, but the feed is coming a little blurry. I don't know if he needs to restart his stream or if it just needs to catch up. Maybe try changing tabs really quick or something, just because your screen looks or a little frozen. Is is Discord on too many frame rates again? Ah, uh, yes. Try that too, Alex. You want uh, me to save it? Turn it down to 15. Yeah, go 1080p 15. And that might just do the trick. Well, I was, I had it on, like, really high, so. Yes. Yeah, that's, what, that's probably Un what it was. Unnecessary. Let's try, let's go down to 30. Thank you. That is much, much that's sharper good. already. Yeah. Thank you, kind sir. We are now in the zone. I have Alex Higher up. Route on your Indeed. Mm -hmm. And uh, Alex, you have the floor, and I will be extracting everyone's requests. Enjoy. Well, you can see here, we did get the continuation short signal. Um, kind of mostly sideways here, sideways downwards. Lower time frames look pretty bad. A three hour, four hour crossing over. So far, I just don't see any reason to want along this spot. I think, uh, I think the people longing this location are maybe just a little too eager to catch knives here. Yeah, still want to break this downtrend before I'm even consider it. Mm -hmm. Nowhere near being over the daily baseline either. I'm um, I'm super content to sit out on Bitcoin here. Ethereum, same story, basically sideways. Looks like a clip. To, to my eyes, we found some support here at the 0 0.382. Push on it. Push, push, push. Fall below it here. And then now this has become resistance. We're, we're, we're under this support resistance level. And at this time, I just I don't see any reason why you would want to be long in this spot. 
So here, resistance, resistance, support, crash. Underneath support, continuation, short signal. Yeah, I don't think there's any good reason to be long Ethereum here either. More sideways on Bitcoin dominance. Still hanging out inside of this um, area of support. We're getting the same kind of buyback here today across all the... Um, Across all the different uh, alt baskets here. Mm -hmm. Buy back on Uniswap. Kind of why I'm saying I think that uh, those profits from bubbles are short lived here. Those what? The the green bubbles today. I think that's short lived on those gains. That's I think it's just a buyback. Yeah. I mean we're down like thirty percent in the week, and we're up like three or three or four percent here. So you know I don't oh. see this as like a massive reaction to support do you nope DeFi perp is up a percent and a half today it's hardly a recovery let's look at higher time frames here three day Woof. I, mean, I guess we could come back up towards what's this area you know 11 6 11 7 You know, kind of trade sideways here at the point of control. Maybe just kind of wander upwards a little bit. And then we, we go straight to hell. But one way or another, now that we're back under this area of resistance, I do expect us to go straight to hell here. Basically, doesn't look too hot. <laughs> Oh, almost got a Cocoa Pebble down the wrong pipe. Jeez. <laughs> Cocoa Pebble. Jesus, gotta, huh. gotta be careful of those workplace injuries put you on the, uh, you're like, on the bench. You're like, yeah, kind of, no. you're like one of those dudes who eats a bowl of cereal while driving their car. <laughs> I would definitely do that, yeah. Hit the brakes and just milk all over the place. Oh, that's awful too, because milk just... Milk's disgusting. It does, it does not smell good in cars when it's been sitting in the car. No way. So, I like this movement down towards our marked area of support. I I still don't see a bounce here in this spot yet. I'd probably look a little bit lower here and that is just so I, and then I probably still wouldn't like We just kind of want to wait for reaction. We, I guys, I really don't think there's any reason to be rushing into catching knives in this spot. Nope. It's just not good. Exchange perp here is probably the best looking. And this is still kind of beneath resistance. But I, if you wanted to make an argument here for this. Yeah, this is kind of a break of trend right here. Not so for shit perp. Mid perp turning support into resistance. So it kind of looks like to me. No good. Alt perp turning support into resistance. I mean, this has been resistance before, resistance here, resistance here. Support, support, support. Boom. We're underneath it. We push up towards it. We're not getting anywhere. We go the rest of the way down. I, I think that I think that makes the most sense in this spot. So yeah, I'm not knife catching here, guys. I'm still mostly in cash. There could be some interesting, you know, there could be some alts that diverge in this spot. <clears throat> we were looking, uh, we were looking at the OMG bubble earlier. I, I want to pull up the Omisa Go chart here.
This is very interestingly postured here. Yeah, it's curling up. Sir. Actually kind of interesting bullish continuation divergences here. This is a very good position for OMG. I would be looking to see if we can get a break above, let's say 1150. If we close above 1150 on the weekly, I'd be looking to take OMG at least to retest $25, if not towards new all-time highs. OMG is also an Ethereum uh, like layer two type competitor thing. Uh, we've seen all the other layer twos and layer one Ethereum alternatives pump very hard the past few months. Uh, oh my, so go could have its turn here. So I, I want to point this out because this is acting in opposition to the rest of the market, which looks like utter crap. So this would be something where you could be like, hey, you know, this this might be interesting to buy into here. The other charts that we looked at, not so much. No. So this is, a, you know, you want to buy strength. You want to sell weakness. So you, you, you need to you need to kind of weigh these things in your mind. I mean, yeah, you think, oh, we've been down so much. We could bounce. This is like a good spot. Eh. Those aren't good enough reasons to like try a knife catch in a situation like that where everything is looking so awful. Let's go ahead and look at the dollar. I mean, Jason already kind of uh, kind of blew our low too soon here, but the dollar is Dude, way up did. today. Wow, it's crazy. Yep. Yeah. Well, this is uh, this is unfortunately what we've been expecting for a few weeks now. Yep. This is a full breakout. We could see some resistance coming up soon here, yeah. but we could just keep going straight up. I mean, this is a very parabolic looking move. Not too common so, for the dollar. Yeah, so if the dollar is this strong, traditional markets have to be taken in on the chip. Not as hard as you'd think. Yeah, not as hard. You're right. Not as hard as you would think. So we're, we're clearly, I would say, investors reflexively bought this spot today. You know, it was down, it got bought up, and then it had one strong down day, and investors bought it, and it was sold into very hard. Starting to get a continuation short signal here, kind of a baseline bounce short. I see more downside, guys. Where where is the strength of recovery here, right? Yeah, that's that's all based on hopium at that point. There's no evidence yeah. to support there. Yeah. So I'm gonna try and knife catch in cryptocurrencies when the traditional markets themselves look rough, like the penny stocks of penny stocks, cryptocurrencies. I'm gonna long. Uh, some big red candles off of yeah, it just doesn't make sense in this spot guys with the way the markets are So the Nasdaq Nasdaq doesn't look so hot, right? <clears throat> it's yeah, this is, guys not rocket scientists once once we broke the trend we just we, we went short It's, it's super obvious short. Yeah, I Think people just get a little too impatient man because like look at all that upside that we've had it would make a lot of sense if we had some couple months of downside like way more than we've gotten already i i would really implore you guys to think of think of all the money that was made or we did make or you might have made and then lost during when the the alt market was really running strong when bitcoin was really running strong it's like Dozens of percents a day, some of them putting up 100, 200 percent days on some of the alts. You know, today the alts are up like four or five percent. And like people are getting like really itchy trigger fingers over it. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, man, you could wait a few days and, you know, there will be some sort of pull. Like, if we do bounce hard here, there'll be some sort of pullback. You can get in. And you'll be fine. There'll be some 100% days ahead of you if you, we've got more of the bull run left over, right? That that would be because if you're buying here, you think, oh, you know, we've got you know we've got this big bounce coming. I 
I would just highly suggest that uh, you know caution and patience is warranted here. It's not all straight up, and it's not all straight down. Even though it feels like straight down sometimes, but you know we're going to have some small bounces, and we need to keep the bigger picture in mind. We need to keep our, our broader plan. Uh, so, if you look at the Nasdaq here, I don't know why you would want to be buying anything right now. This just doesn't look good. Nope. S and P five hundred. Yeah. Sideways, I guess we we gap up. Trade up a little bit, and then we're getting sold into continuation short signal here. Overall, it doesn't look that good. Excuse me. What was that? Okay. Gold looks rough here. I think this might be a time to consider shorting gold for a big move down, at least towards uh, the 1500s. I'm, I'm seeing. I really like uh, the volume down here in this area. So this is a this is an interesting spot. Maybe a first move down. The possibility of further movement down to the 1400s, but if you look at the monthly here and you look at the weekly. I just, I don't see how gold holds on here. See, we've really begun to break through this critical weekly support around $1,800. So weekly support. Fake out below it, we recover. Weekly support, weekly support, weekly support. Oh no, we're breaking out. <laughs> yeah. Silver, we knew it was gonna happen. Silver entering the low volume node. Um, I believe we'll start to move very quickly towards twenty dollars. Mike Maloney's turning over in his grave. He's not even dead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Palladium, more downside. Platinum, more downside. We'll keep our eyes on this, see if we get any kind of bounce from this buy zone. But for right now, I would rather buy a bounce than buy, um, buy a bottom. It's just not worth it to me. Just hanging around its highs right here. So far, we're still holding the uptrend. No need to think about getting out. Corn. Ha ha ha. I think we are going to break up here. We'll see. I This is just a very good spot to look for a bounce. It would The, the setup makes sense here. I'm going to go out to my fields and get some corn right now. Put it in my vault. Ooh. Natural gas is, potentially uh, giving us a blow off top for the week. We're still a few days out, so we'll see about that. But I, I don't like this pullback. It's very strong. This is a daily doji and then a strong reversal candle, just like that. Soybeans, we're still waiting on that break. Come on, soybeans. Man, so just me or the market's have been like really easy to read recently. It's just been telegraphing all its movements. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's been pretty easy to to match just with trend breaks. Yeah, I, dude, I feel like it, the markets have been so easy to read recently. I feel like I'm Neo in the Matrix. Like I just I see the code, guys. Sometimes it feels that way when you're trading. Yeah. Wait, are you popping the red ones or the blue ones? Both. I'm taking them both. Shit. Shit. I see everything. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> I, I, um, sugar, it's looking like it. we're, we're really going to get the pullback here. Um, if we break this uptrend, I expect a severe movement to the downside. We, I can't make heads or tails of it, probably down.
this is an interest. This is an interesting area to get a bounce out of the Aussie 200. I could see us put it, putting in more sideways up in this area before we move down. Never, never underestimate how long you can move sideways before price finally does the thing you think it's going to do. So we'll we'll keep our eyes on this, but for right now, we can move yeah. up. The old adage of the market can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. Yes, so true. Yep, I hate that one. Uh, China fifty. We're still waiting for more moves upwards here. I would be really surprised to see this triple bottom faded. It could happen, but I think it's unlikely. I think we still need to uh, be looking long here. More downside. This doesn't look like it could bounce. Like we we already did a lot of moving sideways at this top. I, I expect more downside here. And faster than faster than this. Faster than the speed of screwed. Uh, Singapore 30, as you guys know, we got pushed out of this short. We'll keep our eyes on it. Most likely downside. Hong Kong hanging out near the lows. Nothing I really want to do with it right now. UK 100 sidling back up towards resistance. It would be interesting if we broke up here. It'd be very interesting because I just don't see that happening. But yeah. we could we could maybe push up to a new high. Hmm. We'll see. India, ooh, interesting bearish divergence here. This is a strong one. Look at this bad boy. Ooh, yeah. There's divergence, falling below the daily baseline, breaking our uptrend while giving us a weekly exit signal on time transformation. I'd say overall there's a lot of confluence here to suggest to us that we're going to move down. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Blah, blah, blah. Japan broke down from resistance. We knew it was going to happen. Netherlands, well, we knew that was going to happen too. So more downside uh, yesterday. Today we tried to move up and then uh, rejected from resistance. I see even more and more downside for the Netherlands coming up in the very near term. Look at that weekly candle right here. Push up, weekly blowout top, weekly doji, reversal candle. Just go figure something else out to do for three months instead of trying to catch knives. It's going to go down. Yeah, guys. We're definitely, at least, at the very least, October's going to be rough. For sure. Spooky. Juan, we didn't fire missiles for Damn. a third time yesterday just because I didn't want to teach you guys bad habits. But if anybody Wonderful. took... <laughs> And if anybody took this Taiwan short, you're about to make a killing. I just, I know it. I can feel it in my heart. Look at that. Look at that chart. It's so ugly. In the heart of the it's card. It's so ugly. Yeah, look at all those bearish divergences. Yeah. Well, we it definitely didn't end up being a swing failure pattern. We were eyeing this, this, uh, this, the potential for it here. It just never did. It got worse and worse. Oh well. Send it to hell. Goodbye, Taiwan. Mm. Ten year UK bonds way down. US Treasury bonds. Finding a little bit of buyers here at the bottom of the trading range. Hmm. This is a knife I kind of don't mind catching. This is an interesting place to be buying 10-year bonds. I would actually rather be a buyer down here than a seller.
it's a nice low risk entry spot because if we're wrong, we'll know really quickly once we uh, once we fall below uh, 131 here. And in that case, we'll be able to just exit our position with a little bit of grace, take take a small loss. Uh, you know, but but you know, being a buyer almost anywhere else, you have to hold on for a little while. But you got to you got to wait and see. Oh, Alex of the past, you brilliant bastard. <laughs> I bet you talk to yourself like that. <laughs> I, I wish <laughs> I talked to myself like that. Thirty year. Hmm. I guess I would expect more downside. Hmm. US 30, we're expecting more downside here. A little bit of pump into the local point of control. Nothing to be concerned about. Uh, unless you're long US Wall Street 30, in which case you have a lot to be concerned about. But if you're shorted, then nothing to be concerned about. Yeah. All right, guys, that's like the world markets and stuff. Everything looks pretty rough here against the dollar, including crypto. I'm I'm not um, I'm not excited to be a buyer right now. Although there are charts that that, that look good, I, I noticed there's a lot of Uniswap charts and Binance Smart Chain charts that, that look good in this spot. Um, maybe they can do well. I I just I'm not willing to pay to find out. I'd rather I'd rather wait for confirmation and, and enter um, a more a more secure long. Then uh, risk all the profits that I, I basically had to like make back after writing too many of my positions down in July. So, well, yeah, that, those are my feelings, guys. I just, you know, I, I took profits when I said I did, uh, you know, like a week and a half, two weeks ago. And I'm pretty comfortable. And, you know, I'm, I'm fat and happy from our move up in uh, July and August. Hell Yeah. Perfectly long the bottom, right at 30k. At least I did. Yeah, we did. I, hell, we had we had uh, we had bottom feeder having us long the bottom of 29k. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I I rode from 30k all the way to 48, and then now we're hedged at 46. So I mean, yeah, all that we were we, we this this says uh, beginning of the summer was rough, but we ended it fat and happy. So, like I said, I um. I'm not eager to rush into any knife catches here, and I don't think you guys should be either. Um, let's go ahead and look at chart requests. There's not much more to say. Indeed. All right. Brilliant. Oh. Did enjoy that technical analysis portion of the show. We're going to get into the next request. Well, the first request right here, right now. All right. Let me just uh, put the first request up on the board. Let's reveal who's here first in the request line today. All right, let's get into it. This first one comes from Rhino TD. He writes, uh, "Can you guys take a look at XRP, please? Some price action happened today. Indeed, price action happened today. Everywhere. Yes. Yeah, every price action happens everywhere all day, but it never stops, my man. Looks uh, it got sold weird. into. It, this was much like the rest of the markets." Uh, we pumped up earlier, and then uh, our pump got sold into pretty hard. I think we could just end up rejecting from this spot and pushing down here. So I, I'm not a buyer here. I'm not interested in this. And I'm not interested on it on any of the alts because lots of alts pumped a little bit today, and then it's been sold into. I told you, I don't want to buy these. I don't want to buy this without uh, without some real confirmation. What's next? All right, terrific. There is your look at uh, XRP. All right, Ripple is in the bag. Big shout outs to uh, Rhino TD for that one. Here is the next request of the day, guys. We have Mike Maker. Let's look at Mana Decentraland. It looks like everything else, my friend. Get the fuck out. What's next? Thank you, Theodore. 
Well, that was nice and to the point. Um... I mean, guys, the, these charts have not changed much since yesterday. And yesterday, everything looked like. And today, everything else looks like. I, I'm probably not going to have a lot to say on a lot of these charts other than get out. Indeed. But with that said, let's continue. We have the following for Wayne in the YouTube chat. Can you take a look at DOT and Litecoin USD? All right, let's look at DOT USD. Uh, trap below resistance, continuation short, get the fuck out. It's dot, and what was the other one? Litecoin. I'm hoping to get a bunch of continuation signals today at the at close. Litecoin's kind of interesting here. Litecoin is one of the few that I don't dislike it. So this is an area of support and resistance. Not a fantastic one, but it is one. Okay, so thought one. Thought two. At the end of today, we would have a reversal signal on time transformation. So this is not a continuation shortly longer, at least at this rate. And then number three is that Litecoin Bitcoin is interestingly positioned for a potential reversal. If it was to reverse, this is the spot where we would expect it to reverse. Right near the lows, right when everybody else thinks Litecoin is going to break down. You know, we had this fake Litecoin news over here that produced this pump. Everybody's like, oh yeah, fuck Litecoin. But that's just what Litecoin wants you to think. Do we have a break of the downtrend here? Not quite. You know, it's a little too close to say, but we, we don't not have a break. You know, actually, you know, on lower time frames, that's a break. This is a broken downtrend on lower time frames. So I I don't I don't feel as badly about Litecoin as I do about the rest of the market. I'm I'm still not a buyer here. I, I want more. I want that confirmation. Mm -hmm. But if Litecoin were to bounce, this is the spot we're like. What's next? Alright, possible spot for that Litecoin bounce. Big shout outs to Wayne for the Pokemon Litecoin requests. Uh, let's get into the next one. What time is it anyway? Oh, top of the hour, 2 o'clock. I'm going to go open that DLive chest in a few minutes. We're, of course, going to wrap the show just a few minutes early. we got to get to that mentorship session come 3 o'clock. But in the meantime, let's continue with the request. Xavier on YouTube. Hello, what do you guys think of a curve short CRV? Take a look. I think, yes. Curve short. Get the fuck in. Yep. That's that's a rarity. Get the fuck yeah. in. Actually, I think uh, yesterday would have been probably the more ideal say, day. But, I mean, right now, you're fine. Look at the three-day. Pretty weak hourly close on Bitcoin there. This could be uh, could be uh, coming soon. Throw a, a curve short here. I would be I would be interested in taking it, mostly because we're back below two dollars and uh, two dollars and forty cents. You can see resistance here, support here, support here, resistance, 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 and here we are. We're back underneath this area. As long as we're underneath two dollars and forty cents, I think I'm willing to be short curve. We started to close back above the area, then I'd be I'd question it. What's next? All right, brilliant. That is a look at curve for Xavier. Good luck in your short, my man. Uh, what do we got next? Boris Bitcoin. Yes, indeed. Boris Bitcoin makes the request line next. He writes, "Happy Hump Day." Thoughts on Axie? I think this one might have a chance at an upwards push. All right, AXS. What do you think? Will it sneak up on us with some kind of? Sh um it did bullish move yep so uh yeah i think we could get a bullish move here uh maybe just kind of retest the highs around 80 dollars. we were talking about this yesterday i didn't like that it was inside of the no trade zone 
Looks like we uh, we actually we closed above it yesterday. Yeah, it closed above. Yeah, I think you could probably take this up towards eighty dollars, maybe even eighty five dollars. Uh, but ultimately, I do want to see this giant move downwards on Axie. You, I think you could squeeze something out of it if you're if you wanted to if you were long or wanted too long. I could see that. What's next? All right. Well, that was Boris Bitcoin's Axie request. Uh, nice move to the upside on that one. So, kind of bucking the trend, but for how much longer? Uh, here is uh, Electric's request on D Live. How do I FOMO into the Dixie? Uh, is this even a question? Are you just trolling? How does one FOMO into the Dixie? I guess you you liquidate your the other risk on assets and get to the dollar. I just shorted. Yes, I mean, first point. of all, you're, you're long the dollar when, when you hold the dollar. So if you sell your other assets, selling your assets gets you long the dollar. Another way of looking at it is if you is if you short something against the dollar, that makes you long the dollar because you're shorting it against the dollar. So being short Bitcoin USD is like being long USD Bitcoin. It's mathematically identical. Um, so that is another way to look at it. Um, I, as you guys know, I have on um, I have on some USD Swissy positions that I put on earlier in the week, and and this is being literally long the dollar. Although I'm long the dollar against the Swissy, but you know for me the the chart looks good enough. It, this was this is another way of hedging yourself against market moves. I you know I I I, I am holding some alts and other spot longings. Or spot longs. Therefore, um, I'm short the dollar because I'm holding these assets long. Therefore, you know, being long the dollar helps kind of offset that risk in those cases. If that makes sense, it does. It's it's, uh, it, these are just different perspectives, different ways of viewing the market. It's like hedging your hedge. Yes. Yes, the gamma. Um, let's go into the next request. Uh, yeah, we actually did a bang out job answering Electric's FOMOing into the Dixie question. Um, let's get into this one for Poly B, and then I'm going to go prepare the D Live chest. So, about a minute away uh, for the D Live chest. Stand by for that. Poly B wants to look at Cody. C O T I. That's the one. Yep. Huh. That's an interesting chart. Ooh. I think we might just be distributing at this high right now. I I'll tell you what. I, I would be willing to enter this if we made a new high. So if we can close above 66 repeating, then I would be willing to go long Cody in this spot. But for now, as after we're, we're already up 50% over the previous high, I mean, we could easily pull back down towards this area and retest it. So I, I don't want this spot right here, or at least not right now. What's next? All right, D-Liveians, we are going to go and open the chest. You have about 30 seconds to get to your d -Live terminal. You have been warned. About to go click that distribute button. In the meantime, I'm going to introduce the next request. And then click distribute. Get ready. Uh, ask about my wiener dog on D Live types. Uh, requesting cheapest way to get cash from bank to Bitcoin. Well, that's uh, kind of a, a newbie question. Cash app, where Coinbase, something like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. You, you you're gonna have to either pay a hefty fee to get it out of your debit card. In which case, you can do it instantly on uh, Coinbase or Crypto.com or KuCoin. Um, or you can do it via ACH. You'll wait two to three business days, but it'll be free. There you go. Uh, that being said, Coinbase Coinbase has this thing where they will let you buy with ACH and give you the price on the day that you bought it, even though the money doesn't arrive for three days for them. They're like, okay, we're going to say that you own the Bitcoin that you just paid us for right now. We, we saw that you initiated the wire. And then in three days when we have the cash, you can have the Bitcoin, whether the price of Bitcoin moved up or down, we don't really care. Like, you, you, you just own the Bitcoin right now. Okay, you bought it. So, I mean, that is technically, I suppose, the quickest way you could own the Bitcoin and, and have it, you know, from cash to your bank account. But uh, you can't do anything with the Bitcoin. 
Yeah, that's Wait, good, maybe they'll but... let you trade it. You could lose the Bitcoin if you wanted to. That too. Um, but yeah, that's uh, basic. The, basically, the uh, the go-to will be something like Coinbase or Crypto.com uh, in order to get your hands on that. Otherwise, maybe try local Bitcoins. Uh, local local Bitcoins. Uh, you might find a broker in your area that might. Uh, well, that's a good able... way to get scammed. I don't know. I don't like recommending local Bitcoins to people. Um, as long as the person has a decent profile, uh, sh you know, as long as you're dealing with some with decent transaction history, the guys with high volumes, uh, never, I personally never had an issue. There's a lot of betting there, Jack. Also, there's, um, a lot of, they have, you know, they have, um, what do they call it? Um, uh, escrow, right? So it's not completely peer to peer. It does go through, um, local bitcoin so the chances of getting scammed are pretty hard but yes local bitcoin is an option not for everybody uh maybe a bitcoin atm in your area is another way usually convenience stores have those um yeah the, the, there really is quite a few options um if you need help ask about my wiener dog uh do do ask and do inquire all right in the meantime let's go get into no, that was the last request. I'm going to check the chat real quick, see if we have any further requests. If not, we're going to bring the, wrap the show down. Big shout outs to today's Lemon Giveaway winners, Rhino TD and Jason, taking the one and two spot. Jason, you lucky dog. Um, I'm back, baby. I'm a rich man again. Indeed. Any word? David Rice and Jonah love the show, taking the three, four, and five spot. Thank you, everybody, who kicked it with us on D Live today. There are your lemons. Um what do we have left not a whole lot i think i'm gonna put the requests away for now and start heading toward the outro let me go quickly check the check oh yeah right here let's check the chat uh we did get uh, a diamond super chat earlier from lilo 11 thank you very much for that diamond super chat um rhino td just came through with a diamond super chat as well oh go on have it back why thank you rhino td he wins the big giveaway and returns 100 plus lemons to the chest thank you so much guys it makes makes it possible to keep the lemons coming um all right so that would be a look at the live super chats uh let's see here let's see here let's see here um any other requests? Uh, you can actually uh, long the tick. What's that? You like this chart, Jason? What do you think about this? Oh, Mover? See. Oh, no, more finance. Yeah, zoom out a little bit. Wow, okay, yeah, you're definitely at that bottom, huh? Break of that trend. It's not um, a bad place to be a buyer here. If we end up below 30 cents, then you'd probably look to get out. Yeah, I would say around that low, you probably have a chance to get out of it with a wick down there if, it, if you're wrong, with a little bit of up pressure. But with the break of trend, I don't think it's silly to take a position on that because the upside's quite large. I mean, what is that up to one dollar there? Like at least. Yeah, if we just moved up to here, this is a two x. Yeah, like that's nothing to. The risk to reward is definitely there. It reminds me of that hose chart a long time ago. Most right. of the other, almost every other alt chart I've looked at here looks looks pretty rough. I, I I just can't tell if they're. I don't know. I guess UBX doesn't look bad here. This could be accumulate like accumulation after. I still have a UBX position that I'm holding on to till it goes up. Let's see. But then you look at these and you're like, you know, how can the market move up when so many of the charts look like this? Yeah, when so many things look so bad. Yeah. Well, then there is today's show, guys. Uh, yes, Joanna Love the Show says PayPal. Anywhere it says Cash App. Indeed. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure if you can pull your Bitcoin off of those platforms to a non-custodial account. But nonetheless, yeah, that's just what you want. Exposure to Bitcoin. Pretty easy nowadays to get your hands on some um what do we have left that's about it i guess we're gonna move to the close there is a mentorship session coming up at the top of the hour as well look forward to seeing some of our premium members in there hey speaking of premium have you checked out our premium offerings Are you interested in maybe joining our mentorship session on wednesdays um this is your chance check out premium.crackingcryptocurrency.com for all our primo offerings yes our education material comes uh uh, highly recommended. You, of course, uh, could step up your game as a trader by checking out the Pathways to Profits course uh, and, you know, loads of other uh, education material, uh, proprietary indicator suite, 
lot of goodies over there at premium.crackingcryptocurrency.com for any aspiring trader. Uh, what else is there to add? Not a whole lot more than that. Uh, check out, of course, today's YouTube description for uh, any news links and timestamps. Yes, timestamps will be added after we wrap up, so you can quickly review some of the uh, some of today's charts and tokens that we look at. Um, not much more to add. I say we get the hell out of here. Um, everybody have yourselves a great day. Final words for Atlas. Great safely. Yeah. Great safely. Don't just don't look for longs, man. Avoid the green button. Stay out of trouble. Don't get wrecked. Bitcoin drooping 41,300 as we move to the exit. Much love to you guys. See you at the mentorship session. Goodbye. Goodbye.